Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad within it. Welcome to Bethel Amy Church, the land of unlimited love. We gather today in this parking lot to give God the praise, to magnify his name on this beautiful fall day. God has blessed us. So as you enter into the sanctuary, come in and bless God. Forget about your yesterday. Forget about your problems. Forget about those things that so easily beset you. And let's worship God. Hallelujah. We need you to like and share on your Facebook page. Let someone know that you're in the house of the Lord this morning and that you have gathered to worship God. God. Come on, let's praise God from whom all blessings flow. So you've got to show some sign. I can't see you. I can see you in those cars. But you've got to beep your horn. Give the Lord the praise. That we know God is worthy to be praised. Amen. So now our praise team is going to bless us. Amen. With uh, our opening selection. You can get out your card. You can stand up at home. Let's exalt the name of God and magnify his name.
ourselves, and we want to worship him this morning. I don't know about you, I'm glad uh, to be here this morning. I'm glad that the Lord woke me up this morning and started me on my way, that we're here to give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. We want to see the Lord. We want to lift up his name and to magnify him. The Reverend Judy Simpson is going to come now and lead us to the throne of God in prayer. And wherever you are, let's just form ourselves into an atmosphere, an attitude of prayer that we can exalt the name of Jesus. Call upon his name and to bless his name. God has been mighty good to us, and so we want to thank him for his blessings. Ask God to bless our worship today. Gracious Lord, our God, we are so grateful for this opportunity to come before you this morning to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, and for your mercy. Thank you, God, for being, just being God all by yourself. We thank you for how you brought us through this past week, through the trials and tribulations of life. You woke us up and you started us on our way every single day of this past week, and you brought us up to this very moment. So we say thank you, God, because we know that in some of our cases, we might have woke up with, with, with our bodies feeling kind of achy. We might have woke up this morning not feeling well, but by your grace and your mercy, you continue to let us live day by day. We understand, Lord God, that we breathe only because you breathe the breath of life through us. So God, we just ask that you forgive us of our sins and of all of our shortcomings. We know that you have continued to watch over us. You continue to bless us in spite of some of the things that we do. We are grateful, dear God, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to come in your presence this morning. Wherever we might be, we thank you, Lord God, that you are among us, that you continue to see about us, that you continue to see about the sick and those who are afflicted. We thank you for comforting those who needed to be comforted. You wrapped your arms of love around those who needed you, God. We thank you for the food that you provided for us, the homes that you provided for us, Lord God. We thank you for our families and our friends. We thank you how you watched over our children as they went to school this past week. We thank you how you watched over us as we went into our workplaces. We thank you for watching over our seniors. We thank you for going into convalescence and retirement homes and watching over the people, Lord God. We thank you. We've come today to hear a word from you, God, that it might continue to uplift us, that it might continue to strengthen us, that it might continue to guide us and lead us through this, our day. We ask, Lord God, that our ears might be open, that our hearts might be open to receive the word. We ask, God, that you continue to, to bless all of those who don't know you, Lord God, that they might Someone just might just say a word to them that it might open up their hearts to say, what must I do to be saved? But we know that there are many who are traveling through this day who don't know you. So we're praying and we're lifting up to you those who do not know you for the pardoning of their sins. We pray for our pastor who will bring the word today. Encourage his spirit, Lord God. We know that it's not easy pastoring people, but he is a good shepherd. And we need to be as sheep to continue to follow the path that you have laid out to our shepherd that it might lead us. We pray for his companion, his children. We pray for this praise team that you might continue to inspire them, continue to lift up their voices, that they might continue to sing the song, songs of Zion that might encourage our hearts. We pray for all of the technicians and everybody who is involved in allowing us to be able to have this go beyond our church doors, Lord God. Bless them and their families. And Lord God, we just thank you for letting the sun to shine today. The S-U-N, but as the S-U-N sun shines, the S-O-N shines in our hearts. This we pray in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus, who suffered, bled, and died, and rose again, that we might have life, and not just life, that we might have abundant life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
We ought to think about his love and think about his goodness. Let your mind go back and think about where God has brought us from. I don't know about you, but the Lord has brought us a mighty long way. Hallelujah. He's brought us through danger, seen and unseen. And God is a way maker. Amen. Hallelujah. So you ought to think. Think about the goodness of Jesus and everything that he has done for us. And to give him glory, honor, and praise. Again, we greet you this morning in the joy of Jesus Christ. Praising God from whom all blessings flow. We thank God that we can see so many cars in the parking lot today. And that we can uh, see so many of our uh, members online this morning. Praise God for those that are worshiping through Zoom. Thank God for those who are calling in and listening online. And we thank God for those that are on Facebook Live and certainly those who will watch us later this afternoon on YouTube, worshiping and praising God. And so we thank God for every opportunity of availed worship. Praise be to our God. Uh, we want to remind you to encourage someone to tune in and join us in worship today. Amen. 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 We want to pause now and uh, ask uh, the church to lift up in prayer uh, the family of uh, Mother Theldra G uh, Gatson. Uh, we certainly want to pray for Mother Theldra and Sister Gia in the loss of their brother Anthony, who passed away on yesterday. Uh, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And so we cover the family now in the name of Jesus. We lift up Brother Dexter Chappelle, who lost his father on yesterday, and we ask God's blessings of uh, uh, comfort to the family, even now in the name of Jesus. We lift up our sick and our shut-in, those that are hospitalized, uh, those that are going through situations. We ask for healing power to bodies, even now in Jesus' name. Amen. And so if you would just bow your heads as we, wherever you are, as we cover these families in the name of Jesus. We want to lift up uh, Sister Mathalyn Shields, uh, who uh, it was in the hospital this week and asking for healing power to her body in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up these families before you. We lift up Mother Theldra and uh, Sister Gio, asking God that you might bless the family. Bless Brother Wallace, we pray. Lord, we know that uh, Brother Anthony has uh, answered the roll call and now is resting with you. And so bless the family abundantly. Give them strength for this moment right now. Touch, Lord God, Brother Dexter and Sister Valerie Chappelle, asking God that you might bless them in the loss and homegoing of their father. Oh God, touch in a mighty way. Lord God, give them strength for the journey. We lift up Mother Mathalyn Shields, asking God for uh, healing power to her body. We thank you, Lord God, for the restoration. And we believe by faith. Bless the doctors and the nurses that are caring for her. Bless her family that is standing dutifully by her bedside. And Lord God, we praise and bless your holy name. Now, there are others that are standing in need of healing power. And so, Lord God, you know all about them. Uh, we ask God that you might touch their bodies right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all of our hearts say, Amen, Amen, Amen. We want to please remind you of our quarterly conference that will be on Tuesday evening. It's Tuesday at 7.30. Tuesday at 7.30. And please tune in to our uh, uh, Zoom, Zoom line. And uh, we will be there Tuesday at 7.30 with our presiding elder to uh, handle the business of the church. It is the first and second quarter. And so for those that are turning in quarterly conference reports, it is the first and the second quarter. And because it is the first quarter, we please need all stewards and trustees, the organization, our church school superintendent, YPD director, uh, missionary president, please be on the line uh, that you can be confirmed. We have two licenses to be renewed. Preachers, please be 
on, on the line, ready in your uniform to answer the role for your license to be renewed. Amen, amen. We also want to remind you of all giving opportunities. We praise God that we can give to the church and the church is still moving forward. Thank you for those that are giving in response to our disaster relief. Envelopes are, are being passed out through the parking lot. And if you desire to give for disaster relief, whether it is for Haiti or you are giving for uh, our brothers and sisters within the First Episcopal District in New Jersey, whose churches and homes were impacted with the tornado a few weeks ago, we are asking that you would place that offering in that envelope Amen. If you're giving for disaster relief online, we're asking that you would place that in the other category in the uh, online giving uh, via PayPal or giving through Givelify. We praise God for those that are continuing to give through PayPal and Givelify through our tithes and offering because the tithes and offerings continue to bless the church to keep moving forward. And so thank you to our brothers and sisters who continue to work week by week, being faithful over a few things. And God is blessing us. We praise God for those that are giving in the parking lot. And our finance ministry is moving through the parking lot now to receive those gifts of tithes and offering. And we praise God. You can also give by driving your offering up to the church. The doors of the church remain open until 11 a.m. And we will meet you at your car to receive your tithes and offerings on Sunday morning. Those that are giving by uh, mail, uh, can we also receive those offerings. But however we give, we praise God for the gift and we praise God even more for the giver. So let's pause as we bless the offering. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Bless each and every gift abundantly, we pray, for it's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our praise team is going to bless us now and take us a little higher in the Lord as we prepare to hear the word of God.
I feel better.
bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Praise the name of Jesus. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Speak to us now, God, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen. We draw your attention, beloved, to the gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter, beginning at the 30th verse. And for those who study in our Bible study, this lesson should be familiar to you. Again, Mark, the 30th, the ninth chapter, beginning at the 30th verse. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus, not wanting anyone to know where they were, because he was teaching his disciples, he said to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men they will kill him, and after three days, he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant, and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and servant of all. He took a little child home, he placed among them, Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little ones in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. For a few moments, let us focus ourselves on this subject, who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? It has been said that Muhammad Ali is the greatest. He declares himself the greatest because he floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. He is the greatest prize fighting champion of all time. And Muhammad Ali established himself as a great boxer through the 1970s and came to understand his strength and his power. He's known as the greatest because of his speed and his agility. Known as the greatest because he used the artistry of heavyweight boxing to change the visual of sports in America. The greatest. He's known as the greatest because of how he danced around the ring and as he danced around the ring and those persons watched him were focusing on his feet, he then was able to hit with an uppercut to the chin and oftentimes knocking out his opponent, the greatest. It's the greatest because he was a true world champion. Uh, there are few boxers who have fulfilled the title as a world champion. Uh, he is the greatest. The greatest! 
because he was able to defeat Charles Sonny Liston in 1964. He is considered the greatest. The greatest because he had his title removed from him but came back into fame and became again the world heavyweight champion of the world. He is considered the greatest, the greatest of all times because he fought Joe Frazier, uh, smoking Joe Frazier, and still was a survivor. He was the greatest of all time. Smoke uh, floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. Uh, the greatest, the greatest because uh, he fought George Foreman. The greatest because uh, he had political position uh, and stood for uh, the values of black people in America at that time. The greatest because he had a strong faith in God. The greatest, the greatest, the greatest. Who is the greatest? Uh, who is the greatest people's champion? Who, who's the greatest? Well, with that in our backdrop, in our mind's eye, Muhammad Ali declares himself as the greatest. I want you now to picture Jesus on the mountain of transfiguration and there with his disciples after God has done a great thing. Jesus now is descending from the mountain. You can't stay on the mountain always. As we preached last week, there are times that you've got to come down to the valley and work. It's not going to be glory all the time, but there are times that you've got to roll up your arms and get dirty. Jesus now descending from the Mount of Transfiguration after being transfigured on that mountain and the glory of God has become upon him now. Jesus descending with these 12 disciples are on their way down and as he is on his way descending from the mountain of transfiguration Jesus is now having a, a conversation teaching his disciples and while he is teaching the disciples the disciples are doing their own thing Jesus is teaching them but the disciples are doing their own thing and the text tells us that they left a certain place mm -hmm. and they passed through Galilee uh -huh. and while they have passed Galilee Jesus did not want anyone to know where where they were and what he was doing because he was teaching them and so they go to Capernaum while on their way to Capernaum beloved Jesus does not want anyone to know where they are and what they are doing uh, let me say that again because I need that to marinate in your spirit Jesus uh, did not want anyone to know where they were while they were on their way down from the mountain of transfiguration uh, on their way through Galilee and on their way to Capernaum because uh, he was in the process of teaching his disciples. Uh, that leads us to point number one, uh, that there are times uh, that you and I must be alone with Jesus. Ah, that when uh, God is about to do something with us, uh, we've got to learn how to steal away with Jesus. Uh, uh, when God is in the blessing business and teaching us and pouring out wisdom into us and building us and shaping us and remaking us and healing us and delivering us uh, that's not time for us to hang out with our friends and be out in the street and do everything that we want to do and end up in the stores and going from here to there uh, there are times that you've got to stop and be still because God is speaking uh, into your spirit uh, and when God is speaking uh, you've got to be still and know that he is God uh, that's when uh, you've got to stop all of the things that you're doing uh, be still uh, go into that prayer closet 
closet and ask God to open up your ears and open up your spirit and listen to what God is saying to us. The disciples were busy chattering while Jesus is trying to teach them. The disciples are busy arguing with each other while Jesus is trying to pour into them. They are so busy caught up in their stuff that they don't realize that Jesus is pouring into them. And sometimes we're so busy with our own agenda that we don't recognize that God is speaking to us. What do you think God is doing right now? We're in a parking lot having church, but God has been speaking to us for the last 18 months, speaking to our world and telling us it's time for us to put him first and to acknowledge him as he is the greatest. The disciples, the disciples are busy chattering. They, they are busy chattering, and Jesus teaches them. Uh, he, tells, he doesn't want anybody to know where they are, and so where does he go? He goes to Capernaum. Now, for those Bible scholars, you need to understand that Capernaum is a, 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 a sea a coast fishing village. And it is the home of Simon Peter and his wife. And it is also a familiar place for Jesus. It is where Jesus was able to go for respite, for rest, for, for, for rebuilding, for, for re-engagement, to be uh, re-invigorized. It is where Jesus can go to be empowered, where he can go and be refueled. It is where he can go and be put back together again. There are times when the world pulls you down that you have to go where you can be filled back up and re-empowered so you can go out and face the world again. And so Jesus doesn't want them to know where he is because the people have been pressing him and crowding around him wanting him to hear heal, deliver, and set free. And so he steals away to Capernaum. And while in the house, Jesus teaches them, the Son of Man will be killed and delivered into the hands of men. And after three days, he will rise again. Jesus is declaring his resurrection. And he is declaring his death on a cross in Calvary. He is declaring that he will rise again, but uh, the disciples again are so busy in their own stuff that they don't hear the promise of God speaking to their spirit. Uh, you see, they weren't being still while he was teaching, uh, and so they missed the message. It, it did not fall on them uh, because they could not hear what God was speaking to their spirit. Uh, and secondly, beloved, uh, we must recognize that when God is speaking to us, uh, there are times that you and I must be at home. At home, at home. We must be at home. Uh, Jesus was in at home in Capernaum at the home of his friends at the home of his loved ones and he was there recharging and retooling but God was in the blessing business at this home uh, the disciples were in the home uh, the, the, the Jesus was in the 
home. Uh, Peter was in the home. Uh, his wife was in the home. They were at home. Uh, I need to pause right here and we need to recognize uh, uh, that everybody uh, does not have a home. Uh, you may have a house that you live in, but that house may not be a home. You may have an apartment that you are renting, but that apartment may not be a home. You may have a, a big old mortgage payment that you are paying uh, uh, to Bank of America or Wells Fargo, uh, uh, but you need to recognize that that may not be a home. You may have it filled up with trappings from Ethan Allen or Ray Moore and Flanagan, uh, but uh, that may not be a home. It may be filled up uh, with Wedgwood China and all of the greatest crystal, uh, the Baccarat crystal, uh, but that is still not a home. Uh, you need uh, to recognize uh, that a home is filled with love. A home uh, is a place uh, that you can go to and be refilled and retooled. Uh, it does not have uh, to be the best looking place uh, and uh, it doesn't have to have acreage around it uh, and flowers in the front yard or white picket fence going around it. Uh, you don't have to have uh, a dog sitting in uh, the front yard for it to be a home. Uh, all it needs to be uh, is your place uh, where it's filled with love uh, and where you and God and your loved ones can come together and when the world beats you down in that home you can be refilled and retooled and that's why we come to the house of the Lord because this is God's house and it's our home and where God is we are and at God's house where is room for all of us yes Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. If I had time, I would pause here and I would insert, uh, uh, I would insert John 14, verse 1 through 6, 6 that talks about, uh, uh, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, I, 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 I did not go tell you this, uh, uh, that, but that where I go, th there you will be with me also. Uh, uh, that, that I go to prepare a place for you, uh, and, and where I go, there you will be. Be with me. Uh, uh, hallelujah. We need to recognize uh, that God has a house with our name on it. Hallelujah. And we've got to live uh, that God will give us uh, a home in glory. The disciples are so busy fighting each other. They're on the street, arguing with each other. And the one thing I remember from growing up is that my mama used to tell us, you can fight in this house, but I better not catch you fighting out in the street. What goes on in our house stays in our house. But you don't take our house business out to the street. In the text, the disciples are arguing in the street. And Jesus waits like mama did till they got home. And when they got home, Jesus asked them, what were you arguing about while we were out there on the road to Capernaum? The disciples were shocked in amazement. I want you to see just like we are looking at each other. Mama standing there with the switch. Mama standing there with the belt. Mama standing there to discipline us. Mama giving us that look. Daddy giving us that look because we acted a monkey out in the street. And now we got home and got called to the carpet. Jesus calls the disciples to the carpet and says, what are you arguing about in the street? Uh, the disciples look at each other and they don't answer like children standing in front of a parent but like a parent Jesus answers his own question 
he starts talking to them about who's the greatest. <laughs> I'm not talking about Muhammad Ali, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I'm not talking about a Sonny Liston page fight. I, I, I'm not talking about a George Foreman fight. I, I'm not talking about uh, the Vietnam War and standing against, well, I'm not talking about racism in America. I'm not talking about uh, becoming, uh, losing your uh, prize world title. I I'm not talking uh, about the boxing gloves hanging on the, I'm not talking about getting in the ring and uh, dealing with an opponent. I I'm not talking about the bell ringing and hearing uh, the bell ring and seeing the, I'm not talking about the lights shining at the box. I'm not talking about going to Las Vegas and on the strip of Las Vegas uh, going in past the machines to go into the fight. I'm not talking about a prize fight. I'm talking about the fight of our lives that now here Jesus tells the disciples uh, that if you are worried about who is the greatest, uh, here's the message uh, that the last shall be first uh, and the first shall be last. The disciples were worried about which one of them was the greatest of Jesus' disciples. They were worried about who he loved the most and who was the one that was his favorite and who was the one that had all of the power and who was the one that could deliver the most people and who was the one that had the healing in his hand. They were worried about their own anointing and their own power and their own uh, victories. Uh, but you've got to recognize uh, that this ministry that we're in uh, is not about us, but it's about Jesus. Uh, and that our names uh, ought not be called, but we ought to worry uh, that our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, it's not uh, about who is the greatest. It's about serving uh, the one who is greatest and the last shall be first and the first shall be last and like a little child we ought to be like children before the throne of grace and ask God to bless us in the midst of our own stuff I don't want to be up high I don't want to have my name called all I want is to do the work of him that said me uh, who is the greatest 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 Jesus is the greatest he's the greatest that ever happened to me Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me Jesus is the best thing. If anyone could ever write my life story or anything that this life could be, I declare that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to you and to me. Don't worry about who is the president of the board. Don't worry about who's the chair of Women's Day, Men's Day. Don't worry about who's the chairperson for the rally day. But live your life that Jesus will say, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. The doors of the church are open. There might be someone who's asking that question, how can I be saved? Pastor, how can 
I give my life to God. Will you give your life to God by accepting Jesus as the son of the living God? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whomsoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If you believe in God and believe in Jesus as the son of God, then you shall be saved. Repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart right now. I'm sorry, Lord, for the sin I have committed. I give myself back to you. Use me for your glory. I'm yours and you're mine. You are the greatest, the best thing that has ever happened to me. So I give myself to you. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Use me for your glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, that's if you have accepted Jesus Christ. But secondly, you need to join the church. To join the church, all we need you to do is put your name in the chat. Say, Pastor Greer, I'm joining Bethel Church today. And if you do that, we will connect you with we will uh, give, fill out a membership card with you and you're in our church fellowship. And so that's all that you have to do. Third, lastly, if there's someone that needs a prayer, call the church and we will pray you through. 860-243-5778. And remember, you're asking the question, who is the greatest? Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. If anyone can ever write your life story, for whatever reason that might be, you'd be there between each line pain and story for Jesus is the best thing 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 Come on, praise team. Bring that up a little bit. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That ever happened. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, rest, rule, and abide with you, now henceforth and forevermore. And if you're asking who's the greatest, don't worry about man or woman, but thank God for Jesus and declare Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Go forward in grace and have a great week in Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. And amen. Tuesday on the quarterly conference.